And to begin the business portion of our meeting, I am going to call our board secretary, Denise Carpenter, to the podium to present our minutes. Good morning. Um, uh, all the board members who have your packet, you should have seen the minutes from May 20th meeting. So if there's no questions or comments. Thank you very much, Denise. Um, we did receive those minutes in your packet. The chair will entertain a motion to approve the minutes of the May 2021 uh, board of directors meeting. A motion, please. Thank you very much. We have Susan Stevenson making the motion. A second, please. Yay, we've got a second. Thank you so much, Marie. And um, is there any further corrections or changes to the minutes? Hearing none, all those in favor of the motion, please signify by saying aye. And those opposed by saying no. The minutes have been adopted. Thank you very much, Denise, for keeping those minutes for us. And we now have Sherry Hollis. She is a new seat with a new company. It is so fabulous to have CEOs that are women. Thank you for that glass ceiling breakage. She is the first female in the company that she um, has joined in March of this year as a CEO. Welcome, please, Sherry, as she presents our finances. Thank you so much. And it's uh, actually seat A, though, so Chief Administrative Officer, but let me tell you, I'm a bit of a weight. So, <laughs> so I will be glad to give the finance report. And for the Women's Foundation, I want to make sure everyone understands that we operate on a fiscal period of July 1 to June 30. So that means not long ago, we finalized our annual number. So the financials ending June 30th were sent to all of the members of the board of directors and has been approved by the finance committee. The financial year 2022 interim operating budget was approved and sent to the finance committee as well. The com uh, complete operating budget will be presented at the September board meeting for approval. This is our usual process. By so, Madam Co Chair, would you please call for motion to approve the Needles in 630 and approval of the fiscal year 2022 interim operating budget? Thank you. Thank you very much, Sherry. Um, the Chair will entertain a motion to approve the interim budget and the financial statements for June 30th, 2021. A motion, please, from the floor or from our board. Yay, Karen. Karen has made the motion in a second, please. Uh, very good. Thank you, Catherine. We have a motion in a second to approve the interim budget and the financials for June 30th, 2021. Any further discussion? All those in favor of the motion, please signify by saying aye. Thank you. And those opposed by saying no. The financials have been approved. Thank you very much. And now we have uh, Gretchen McClendon. Gretchen, she is our Board Development and Nominations Chair, and she will present her report. Thank you, Rosemary. This year, we have several outgoing board members. Their leadership and expertise have helped our mission to support women and families in reaching their highest potential. We wish them the best of luck and will always consider them a member of the Women's Foundation family. We know that several of you are attending virtually. However, if you are here in person today, would you please stand as I call your name? Special thanks to Andrea Beanstock for 19 years of service, including serving as board chair and secretary. <laughs> to Shirley Clark Barber for 12 years of service in supporting our marketing, development, and executive committees. <laughs> Gina Luttrell for four years of service, including serving on our annual tribute function and executive committees. 
Jennifer Oswald for 14 years of service, including as board co-chair and secretary, as well as a member of our finance committee. <laughs> Amy Schaefer for six years of service, including serving as co-chair for Power of the Purse. Leslie Lynn Smith for four years of service, including as a member of our marketing and education committees. And finally, Roquita Coleman Williams for six years of service, serving on our grants committee. We are so grateful for their collective years of service dedica dedicated to guiding the Women's Foundation and moving our vision forward. The maximum capacity of our board of directors is 35 members. In keeping with our policies and procedures, the Board Development and Nominations Committee is committed to diversity and leadership and support of our foundation's values, mission, and vision. Board terms consist of three years, renewal up to three consecutive terms, and some exceptions are made based on the needs of the organization. There are several members today who are renewing their first, second, or third terms. And additionally, special provisions have been made for term renewals, uh, once again, based on organizational needs. So um, prior to today's meeting, the Board Development and Nominations Committee was sent to the full board for review. We appreciate all the work you do to lead and support the foundation. And once again, this concludes my report. Um, and Madam Co-Chair, please call for a motion. Thank you, Gretchen. As always, we appreciate all the work you do. She is out there every day looking for qualified board members um, to join our team. Thank you for that service, and she's done it for a number of years. Uh, I'd like to entertain a motion to approve the fiscal year 2022 officers and board members. A motion, please. Thank you, Karen. Yeah, I can count on Karen. Thank you, Anne Marie. You can I count on me for a second? <laughs> yeah. Okay, we have a motion and a second to approve our slate of officers and, and board members for 2022. This is called passing the baton. We really like this. I, I, let, me, let me do the motion first. Okay, so. <laughs> Um, all those in favor of the motion, please signify by saying aye. And those opposed by saying no. The motion is carried. Congratulations, 2022 20, officers and board members. Thank you very, very much. Our trustee, Ellen Kleiss, um, was on her way to Virginia, but she chose this morning to stop in early, early. I'm talking 7.30. Um, to to wish well wishes to Nisha and I, um, but she talked about passing the baton, and I said I'm going to use that, Ellen. And so Ellen, who is driving or riding anyway to Virginia, she said she was going to join us um, through uh, YouTube and the virtual um, setting that we have set up for those. But Ellen. Uh, Ellen, I, I, I am stealing it, and the passing of the baton, of course, was done through the Olympics, and guess who won the gold? And it is the women's team that won the gold in passing the baton, so we should not hurt. It is bittersweet. Somebody said bittersweet over, over here earlier, um, but it is it is bittersweet, but we are delighted to be passing the baton to this, this fabulous slate of officers. Well, now it is time for our co-chair, Nisha Powers. There is nothing like her, y'all. I am telling you, she is absolutely wonderful. But Nisha Powers, our co-chair, she has some remarks. Good morning. <laughs> so I'm Nisha Powers, and this is my home state still. Um, and I am co-chair, as Rosemary mentioned, of the Board of Directors of the Women's Foundation for Greater Memphis. And this is a special moment for me because I have served on the board for 10 years. And every bit of it, because Rosemary came 11 years ago, 
was marked by me walking in her footsteps. And what a privilege that has been. It's my honor to give a brief report, but hang on, it's a bit lengthy, <laughs> on our accomplishments and progress toward our Vision 2020 strategic plan goals uh, during our time as co-chairs. So our board has some um, of the most diligent, devoted, caring women that I have ever had the privilege of working with. And Rosemary and I um, worked with our executive committee as we made some very, very difficult decisions, but necessary decisions as we continue to push forward our strong agendas on behalf of women and families in our city. Our board provided financial oversight, strategic direction, and leadership for the organization. We are humbled by the role that the foundation plays as a main state organization supporting the green tea and community partners that work relentlessly to improve the well-being of women and children in our community. Over the past five years, our work has focused on, and say it with me, 38. Yes, 38126. We embrace the three-generation approach in an effort to reduce poverty. Since 2015, when we announced the 2020 Vision 2020 Strategic Plan, we have invested nearly, get this, $6.6 million in over no, yes, in progress. In over 150 programs that provided services and resources for more than 16,500 individuals and members. Vision 2020 was designed around five goals essential to our mission. They are case management and wraparound services, job skills and employment, early childhood education, my faith, youth development, and financial education and asset building. I want to share with you some numbers of what we've accomplished since we launched Vision 2020. And to truly feel the weight of this, I ask that you just close your eyes for a moment. And when I read these numbers, I want you to think about how each of those numbers represents a person, a real person. So eyes closed, thinking about these people. 1,730 individuals have been placed in jobs. 94 individuals started a business or a micro enterprise. 16 residents have purchased homes, the American dream to so many. 6,886 individuals benefited from special projects and initiatives, and 825 little ones, children, were enrolled in early education and child care programs. 1,065 caregivers and parents have been engaged in early childhood development and parenting education, and 5,632 young people have participated in programs supporting positive youth development. You can open your eyes. So this is not a person representation, but a percentage. I will add that the average household income has increased by 53%. Carried on my clap all the way through. And you know what? We are determined to replicate our work in other similarly challenged neighborhoods throughout the city. Stay tuned for more details about that. <clears throat> our work aligns with three essential pillars that guide us in everything we do they are leadership, philanthropy, and collaboration on leadership of the foundation. In our community, we recognize the importance of engaging residents 
of our community with varied backgrounds and experiences and have worked to that end. On our board, our board members bring varied expertise in healthcare, real estate, banking, engineering, business, marketing, and so much more. With our young folks, we've expanded the Memphis Young Women's Initiative, or the YWI, to engage young women of color, ages 12 through 24, through talent targeted programming and leadership development training. They have become grant makers, advocates, and community change agents. We all know that COVID-19 nearly paralyzed Memphis, impacting the health, the safety, and economic security of our community. Our donors, they responded by pouring out and giving. Whoops, he just fell out of his seat. You good, buddy? Okay. And we were, and so I'll say that again. <laughs> Our donors responded with an outpouring of giving. And we responded by rolling up our sleeves and doing. We adapted and pivoted to support the many immediate response efforts needed within our community. Our board immediately approved the distribution of $400,000 in emergency funding to grantee partners to meet the needs of the families in South City. After conducting a needs assessment, and we're always doing that, assessing need, we also established the 38126 COVID response project to provide essential items and food for families. We distributed over 150,000 pounds, I need to say that again, 150,000 pounds of food and provided other essential items such as gift cards, masks, on-site COVID-19 vaccinations, and resource guides. So number two on our pillars is philanthropy. In our efforts to provide students access to technology and digital literacy training, laptops were given to each student at Booker T. Washington's graduating class of 2020 and 2021. Each graduate also received com computer coding training a backpack filled with needed items, and a $100 gift card. In partnership with FedEx and the Memphis Grizzlies, we hosted three back-to-school drives supporting Booker T. Washington and LaRose Elementary. Shout out to Memphis Grizzlies, right, Lucas? Go Grizz! Shelby County Schools is one of our strategic partners and has allowed us to connect with students and distribute over 2,000 backpacks, books, PPE, other essentials, and $12,000 in gift cards provided by Kroger. Thank you, Kroger. The secret to achieving these outcomes? The relentless support of our community partners, our sponsors, and our volunteers. Thank you to each of them. When Rosemary and I began our tenure as co-chairs, we knew a key task would be to help steward and support the final years of Vision 2020 strategic plan and bringing it home. Right, Susan? As you have heard, the past two years have been filled with success, lessons, challenges, but most of all, growth. By working together, we have accomplished so much while keeping the community at the very center of everything that we do. I want to personally thank Rosemary, not being proud of, for her leadership and for being on this journey with me. You are a formidable force with your partner right beside you, a mentor, a giver, a doer, my sister, and I'm so thankful to have walked with you. <clears throat> I'll now turn it over to you for our third pillar, collaboration. Oh my, Claire, I do have Kleenex. <laughs> 
is for real. <laughs> I'm in Kimisha. You know, 11 years serving on this board has been a fabulous journey, but that journey, serving alongside this lady, has been the best experience for me these, these last two years. She's a mother, a wife, a business partner, and and her, and her whole family's here. This is this just wonderful? She's an engineer. She is absolutely a formidable figure in downtown Memphis. She is known across the state, and she is a commissioner. Uh, she's she's just unbelievable, and we are truly, truly blessed to have been able to get together. Thank you. As a past finance committee chair, and now as the board co-chair for just a few more minutes, um, I've seen firsthand the growth that we have been able to make in our financial investments. And thanks to the support of local and national corporations, donors, and foundations, we have exceeded our annual fund campaign for the last two years in a row. Our FY 2021 ended on June the 30th, has been reported by Sherry. And we raised $2.9 million. That is 20... <laughs> Susan likes that a lot. <laughs> That is 23% over our goal of $2.5 million. Thank you so much. Everyone in this room participated in achieving our goal. We additionally received commitments of $1.3 million through requests in multi-year grants from corporations and foundations. The total amount of funds secured in fiscal year 2021 was, wait for it, $4,286,120. And thank you for this foundation. Thank you all. We leveraged our leadership to influence an additional $22 million through collaborations and partnerships. And this comes thereby our third pillar, collaboration. And let me share with you the collaboration partnerships that have been critical to achieving outcomes for our 2020 vision. And just these are just a few. The Annie E. Casey Foundation's Evidence to Success Program introduced in 2018 has provided an evidence-based framework for assessing the needs of children and ensuring they have quality resources supporting their health and well-being. With the support of the South City Community Board, we have completed four of the five phases of evidence to success. Phase five will focus on program implementation with the introduction of the Strong African American Families Program and our three generation model. Our grantee partner, Knowledge Quest, will lead in that implementation. We recently launched the South City Digital Inclusive Inclusion Initiative in partnership with Start Company to provide internet access as well as technology, digital education and literacy training for families in zip code 38126. $620,000 in funding has been secured towards a $3.5 million initiative to provide Wi-Fi and internet service for 1,000 households within the next three years. Access is needed as a gateway for education and workplace skills within the five neighborhood Wi-Fi smart zones. Our team pivoted to fundraising virtually. But I dare say there was nothing virtual about the dollars that were raised this past 18 months. 
Our 2020 tribute luncheon was canceled. But you know what our sponsors did? They stepped up. They kept their dollars and reallocated those dollars to grant making. And grant making we did. And with Catherine Gamble, chair of the Grants Committee, and her Grants Committee members, they reviewed applications and have awarded 31 grantee partners with how much money, Catherine Gamble? And many, many of you are here in the, in the room, and that was a record for us. We have never allocated $750,000. Thank you very much, Catherine Gamble and Patria, for, for all of your work in meeting the needs of the grantee partners. The Foundation's first virtual annual tribute luncheon and leadership symposium generated more than $350,000. And a huge shout out to the High Family Foundation and the Women's Funding Network for their $100,000 challenge grant. And this allowed us to triple your gift from 292 donors where we were able to raise $170,700. Thank you, donors, and thank you to the Family Foundation and the Women's Funding Network. We will accept the challenge, and you know we will make that challenge. The 2020 Power of the Purse online auction netted record-breaking results, and a portion of the proceeds supported our COVID-19 response project. Pioneering in this work that we do as a foundation, the foundation was selected by the state as one of the six grant administrators for the distribution of $11.8 million of the $150 million allotment for the Tennessee Community Cares Program. And our staff analyzed all of those applications did not take Christmas, New Year's, the, the Thanksgiving holidays off, and those grants supported 60 organizations in Shelby County in COVID-19 pandemic relief. Nisha, you are here, and we have some highlights to share with you. And I'm going to have Monroe, we're going to cue the video and join us in this short video. For more than 25 years, the Women's Foundation for Greater Memphis has been an organization of women empowering women to break the cycle of poverty. Our mission is to encourage philanthropy and foster leadership among women and support programs that enable women and children to reach their full potential. My life has made a drastic change. Like, I'm not sure if I would have the job that I have or have the car that I have if I would have never gone through the getting ahead class or volunteered for the Women's Foundation. It's so many people that they have connected me with to build myself and it's like i see a different light of day like everything has changed my children are happier their grades are better since 1995 we have invested more than 30 million dollars to support more than 530 programs involving more than 115 local nonprofits, including investments in advocacy and research our program consists of the btw lady warriors athletes these young ladies are the top in their class, on and off the court. So what we do is we expose our young ladies to careers, opportunities, colleges beyond the 38126 zip code. Our program um, extends beyond the classroom, beyond the court, to real life itself. Since 2015, we have been driven by the Vision 2020 strategic plan to reduce poverty by 5% over five years in the heart of Memphis. 
The Women's Foundation has invested and leveraged more than $10 million supporting programs that provide services for more than 10,000 people living in the 38126 zip code. The Women's Foundation has impacted my life by providing for the Lady Warriors to travel outside of 38126 to get an experience um, to compete against different talent and bond with our teammates. I attend Russ College. I am a rising sophomore um, majoring in biology. I currently attend the Tennessee State University. I'm a junior majoring in early childhood education. In five to ten years from now, I see myself being a teacher in elementary school. I also see myself being an entrepreneur and owning my own business. The foundation connects our partners to our 38126 families to resources and opportunities that empower both adults and children and bring families towards self-sufficiency and stability. Significant impact has been made working with community grantee partners to support our families. The COVID-19 pandemic has brought tremendous challenges to Memphis over the past year. The almost paralyzing effect has had multiple impacts on health, safety, and the security of our community. So we've had a long-standing partnership with the Women's Foundation, and um, during the pandemic, I think that you know, Women's Foundation has kind of been a coordinator, a platform uh, uh, for um, bringing together all these organizations in 38126. And so they reached out to us um, to just see how our organization was doing, if we um, were still serving families, um, were there things that we could partner with. The Women's Foundation shifted to prioritize our support to meet the needs of our families and spurred the creation of the 38126 COVID-19 Response Project. The Women's Foundation partnered with other philanthropic groups to invest in emergency programs and support low-income women and families. With the help of our corporate sponsors and community partners, more than 160 volunteers helped 2,500 families in need through the distribution of more than 70,000 pounds of food, personal hygiene kits, face masks, diapers, hand sanitizers, gift cards, and community resource packets. Over the past five years, many of our families have made significant progress toward economic stability. We stand firm in our commitment to do this work and serve our families to make a lasting impact on their future. I would encourage the young women to take all the opportunities they are given. There's so much more than 38126 or what you've seen. Don't be afraid to step out of the box. Don't be afraid to be different. Don't be afraid to be bold. Young women, we can change the world and the pandemic cannot stop us. <laughs>
Will the families and friends of those standing please stand? Wow. There better not be anybody sitting down. I think I've covered all the bases. <clears throat> Rosemary Ann and I look at each of you. We are washed over with awareness that you are the village that is doing this good work. I thank you. I mean, all of you. You may be seated. You can stay up here and come straight. As you know, our new fiscal year began in July 1. On the July 1, we would like to thank our Grants and Programs Chair. Catherine Gamble and members of our Grants Committee for reviewing this year's applications for funding. Our Board of Directors recently approved, as Rosemary mentioned uh, before, 31 grantee partners for the 2021-22 grant cycle. The list is provided in your program, and you might be able to see on your screen, I'm not sure at the moment. We look forward to working with you as we continue supporting our families in South City and beyond. Thank you. Now it's time to touch the mission. And it is my pleasure to introduce Bridget Love and Yolanda, Yolanda Robinson. Please, please come to the podium. volunteer, resident ambassador, or mentorship program, or my children participating in summer activities. In the late 1999, I lost my employment. Throughout my employment, I worked with my family support specialist on a continuous basis who assisted me with my employment research. My family support specialist provided me with emotional support and encouraged me that I needed to stay on track. Then the pandemic came and I continued to check in on a weekly basis, and the job market practice was non existent. But I did not lose my hope. I kept my faith in that this tool passed. As things began to reopen, my family support specialist notified me of an administrative assistant position open with USI, stating that it should be filled by a resident, and that was the first person that she had in mind. <laughs> Even when this being in mind, despite that I work in the council table, my family support specialist encouraged me to interview because she knew what type of person I was and she knew my work ethic. And she believed I would really adjust. After finding the application process, I received the application and completed the same day. Within the next week, I received the call. My first interview was scheduled. Y'all, I'm so excited. Fast <laughs> forward, my second entry was completed and the same response. And on to the third one with the final executive vice president. Y'all, believe it or not, I am now the new administrative assistant for the Robinson Joseph. I am a former Foot Home resident. I grew up there and now I am a resident of South City. 
I would like to thank the lovely women of the Women's Foundation, Ms. Leslie, my getting head teacher. I was one of the first graduates of the getting head program. And I would like to thank my five wonderful children who are named the Fabulous Five. <laughs> Who has made me the mother, grandmother, and the woman that I am today? They was my motivation to return to school to receive my education that I have helped always instilled in them to receive. My life as a teen mom was not easy. By the age of 19, I was a mother too. Being a single mother and going to school was so hard for me. I made the this and I was so far behind, I made a difficult decision to drop out of high school. By the age of 24, I was a mother of five. Through the process of life, I, mean, I have had many downfall, faced hardships, struggles, challenges, even lost my will to exist sometimes. But I knew that I had a purpose. I attended and graduated from several schools, including the diploma program, the job placement program, trying to make my life better. It was in 2018, while I planned for a job in Methodist, hospital that I was informed that the diploma program that I attended it no longer existed and without my high school diploma I wasn't able to advance. Then I heard about the Excel Center and all the great things they have done for us to transform their lives. I hesitated for a minute thinking of failure again. I said to myself, Yolanda, what are you waiting for? You deserve so much better. So I resigned from my jobs, enrolled in the sales center, began class during the second term of September 2019. I was doing great until I was sad trade by the pandemic of 2020. But it never crossed my mind to give up because I was almost at the finish line. And here I am today, proud of standing on the stage in this one circle at the age of 45 with my Diploma, high school diploma. In my second step in journey in life, I will be attending Southwest to major in criminal justice. And then I'm my education at the University of Minnesota. And my next step is to receive my master's. You're both an inspiration to us all. We wish the best for you and your families, all the five and five, in all your future endeavors, masters, maybe PhD, whatever. Bring it. We have Karen Johnston, who is our development chair to the stage, and she is going to have some special recognition. Please join me in welcoming Karen Johnston. I don't know how to follow that. I mean, Bridget and Wanda, you are inspirations. You are amazing and we are so glad that you are here to launch our new fiscal year and give us so much hope, gratitude, and encouragement on all of your success. Thank you. So as uh, Rosemary introduced me, I'm Karen Johnston. I'm the development chair 
And on behalf of the entire board, I would like to express my appreciation and gratitude to our esteemed co-chairs. Thank you, Rosemary, and thank you, Nisha, for leading us by example, as you can all see, um, throughout this, well, two years. So <laughs> um, it's my pleasure to also recognize those who served in key fundraising and community leadership roles to make this year such a success. Today, I'm honored to express appreciation to our event sponsors and committee leaders. You have taken um, a lot of time to work with all of our programs and with all of our fundraising activities. For health and safety, we are not going to be giving out um, the awards. We will um, be giving them that opportunity today. Bank of America, um, they have been our pre presenting sponsor of the annual Power of the Purse auction for the last four years. And last fall, as many of you know, um, we had to go virtual with the Power of the Purse. Uh, it was a crazy endeavor to try and figure out how we were going to uh, logistically make that happen. But with the staff and with the encouragement of the board, we were able to host uh, a wonderful virtual Power of the Purse with live music, auction, prizes, and, an, and especially an appearance from Jennifer Holliday. And again, thank you, Bank of America, for your continued support. The Power of the Purse Leadership Committee consists of our co-chairs, Sherry Hollis and Anne-Marie Watkins Wallace. Um, our honorary co-chairs um, were Beverly C. Robertson and our wonderful Pat Kurt Tigret. And our marketing and publication public relations chair, Tony Baldwin Evans. Um, they are all to be congratulated. Thank you again for your efforts. And we exceeded our goal by raising over $51,000. Thank you. I am pleased to announce that the next Power of the Curse auction will be held Thursday, October 21st. There is a Save the Day card in your packets, and thank you again to Bank of America for being our presenting sponsor again this year. The 2021 Tribute Luncheon and Leadership Symposium, as uh, Rosemary and Nisha uh, described to you, was a half day was a half day virtual experience and was designed to con connect, uplift, and empower attendees in their personal and professional lives. More than 1,000 attendees participated in the day of activities of this event. The presenting sponsor was FedEx. Again, thank you, FedEx, for your help. We are very grateful for their partnership over the last 20 years. Baptist Memorial Healthcare Corporation was a presenting sponsor for the leadership component of the symposium. Tony Bull and Evans, again, thank you for the marketing and public relations committee were they able to gain exceptional coverage and social media engagement for pre and post events. Anne-Marie Watkins Wallace led the logistics committee and boy was this a nut to crack to figure out how we were gonna do the several different components of the symposium and boy, she knocked it out of the ballpark. So uh, she worked behind the scenes and was able to assist with flawless execution. That was a big Hail Mary. During the luncheon, we announced our first ever $100,000 challenge grant provided by the Hyde Family Foundation and the Women's Funding Network. And on the first day of the challenge, we were able to raise $76,000 towards our goal. <laughs> Leading the fundraising efforts and development is very special to me, and I have had the honor to be a part of the many activities that we have hosted in zip code 38126. My boys have also joined me in volunteering, so this was truly a family effort. I know how deep the need is and how committed the Women's Foundation is to improving families' lives. I will continue to do my best and influence others to give their time and their dollars. If you are in this room, you, and virtually as well, you have a role that connects with our mission. Thank you for your support. We have envelopes in each of your gift bags 
for you to give or invite others to give as well. Now, I would like to ask Marcia Bowden Marche, co chair elect, to come to the stage. Good morning. I am Dr. Marcia Bowden Marche, a former education chair and a physician in my real life. So I would be remiss if I didn't uh, remind each one of you that you need to get your vaccination. <laughs> Karen, I can't go any further without thanking you and recognizing your leadership and our signature fall within power of the purse. You and your husband opened up your home and you spent so many hours and uh, you helped us exceed our annual fund goal. We, over the two past two years, have raised $5.2 million. <laughs> I, this meeting, I guess I should say I received the baton um, along with my good friend, Gina Brewer. Gina is watching virtually with about 60 of our friends. She is a brilliant, joyous, generous person. And she believes that success, real success, is making a positive impact in the lives of others. And she is the mother of our foundation's youngest philanthropist, her daughter Madison, I'm sorry, Addison. And she's given every one of her five years. Now I have the privilege of recognizing the accomplishments of two great women who are also friends, Rosemary, and Nisha. During the height of the pandemic, they led the restructuring of our organization, which allowed our foundation staff and board members to work remotely, serving their entire tenure, with the exception of today, virtually. They have both represented the foundation in local and regional uh, publications. And despite the challenges of all nonprofit organizations during this terrible time, they exceeded all of our financial goals, raising more money than we have in a very long time. They will continue this winning rhythm as leaders, as colleagues, and friends, as Nisha assumes the role of chairwoman of the Tennessee Aeronautics Commission. And Rosemary joins her as a board member, as uh, one of the board directors. They will also continue on our board as co-chairs of organizational effectiveness, and they certainly have shown that they know how to do that. As a salute to you and your leadership, we have gifts for each of you. You will see on the screen, we have hot proclamations and letters from city, county, and state officials. You also will have letters from the Tennessee Board of uh, Regents, Brighton Bank, the Tennessee Aeronautics Committee, Commission uh, Division, and Memphis Area Realtors Association. We have a signature foundation gifts for you and a special video with some very visionary women who have something to say. Cue the video. <laughs> everyone. I am Mary McDaniel, the immediate past chair of the Women's Foundation for a Greater Memphis. The Women's Foundation continues to be a major leader in this community under the magnificent leadership of our two fabulous co-chairs, Nisha Powers and Rosemarie Fair. Nisha, Rosemarie, what can I say? You have given new meaning to the two words, dynamic duo. We have had some of the most challenging times ever faced by any two leaders. You did not flinch, you did not waver. Thank you, Rosemary. Thank you, Nisha. Much love and admiration to both of you. Nisha and Rosemary. I'm pretty sure there's never been a time that it's been more challenging to serve as co-chairs of the Women's Foundation, but the two of you have done so 
with amazing grace and courage and exceptional success. The Women's Foundation entered 2020 poised to celebrate 25 years as an organization and 20 years of Ruby's leadership. But instead we were faced with a global pandemic that redefined how all of us were going to live and work. Many organizations were simply overwhelmed, but not the Women's Foundation. And that's due in large part to your leadership. As co-chairs, you found a way to help us set about the work of serving the community that we love, helped us find a way to meet virtually successfully to redefine our mission, and you helped us crush our fundraising goal, producing $2.9 million on a $2.3 million goal. There's simply no words that are adequate to thank you for all the leadership that you've provided. You've been steady, inspiring, optimistic, and unfailingly kind. I respect and admire both of you more than you can imagine, but I also love you. Thank you for your gifts. We're all better because of you. Thank you for this opportunity to extend my appreciation and my gratitude to Rosemarie and to Nisha for their leadership of the Women's Foundation for Greater Memphis Board. Nisha and Rosemarie, you showed us how to lead in an extraordinary time with extraordinary leadership. You showed us how to stand in the gap, how to stand up for people and to stand with people and how to do that in our community in a way that supports women and children as they move to self-sustainability. We appreciate you and thank you for this great model of leadership. Nisha and Rosemary, what a dynamic duo and what a fabulous two years the Women's Foundation has had under your joint leadership, despite the challenges of having to operate remotely during much of that time. Your strategic vision, your devotion to our mission of serving families in 38126, and your strong organizational skills have been an inspiration to us all. Even on Zoom, your confidence and your faith and your beautiful spirits have energized us and led us. And more important, they've led the Women's Foundation for a Greater Memphis to some of its most successful years in its 25-year history. Thank you. staff of the Women's Foundation for Greater Memphis, we want to present you both with a Murray Award. We have a copy of the Murray book, including a special me message from Kathy Buckman Gibson, granddaughter of Murray Buckman, who is the CEO of KBG Technologies, a founding board member, and a member of our board of trustees. Ladies, you have gone beyond above and beyond for the families and the community that we serve. You have served with honor and distinction and humor and kindness. We hope that you accept these tokens of appreciation and know that we love you both. And thank you, thank you again for everything that you've done. And now for our president and CEO, Ruby Bright, for her final four marks. Good morning. You've heard a lot about our work um, and um, for you who are attending, which by the way, you look fabulous. We are so appreciative of you joining us. We appreciate all of you who are watching us virtually and cheering us on. I encourage you, if you are not in the room uh, and those in the room, we can give each other a high five. So just give yourself a little wiggle, you know? Yeah, just shake it, shake it around a little bit and just feel good. Feel good about being here. Feel good about Memphis and celebrate. We, we have faced some challenges. And I know that as you heard um, about fundraising success uh, and, and our program success, 
that one doesn't happen without the other. I am really, really proud. Most importantly, a learned investment of your time. Your confidence to the foundation. Your counsel. Your sweat power. Many of you in this room were with us as we ran over to Georgia Avenue in 3126 and handed out food, gave smiles, lifted boxes, and just wanted to give and help. Many of you written checks. For me, I am so honored to be not in the present, but at present, as the president and CEO of the Memphis Foundation for Greater Memphis for over 25 years. At this time, we often have to really ask ourselves, with everything going on, how do you make a difference? And today, that was truly, truly defined by these two young women who bore their souls and their lives to us, but in gratitude. And I want you to think, as Nisha said, as you imagine all of those numbers, putting people behind you, putting people in front. We made a commitment in 2015 to reduce poverty by 5% by 2025. I'm here to stand, I'm standing here today to let you know that we're on the verge, on the world, on the road rather, to get there. Have we made it? No. Have we achieved great accomplishments? Yes. By our calculations, and that is Patriot Johnson, our grants and program director, who is very much a data-focused woman and an amazing leader to many of our ranching partners, right? We have, we have gained results in the entire zip code of 2.9% reduction in poverty. And we have committed to continue to sustain that. And Monroe, for the sake of time, I'm just going to move on into the vision 2025. We, we want to share with you that we've made many accomplishments. And many of those we've shared through the numbers that you received. We will also provide a report on Vision 2020 and our results and as we prepare to move forward. Our board of directors over the past nine months have thought about what will happen in the next five years and how will we make change. What lessons have we learned? What partnerships and relationships have we garnered? And where are those that we need to find? We are proud of our public-private partnership. We are proud of our work at state level, at national level, and more importantly, at home level. The Women's Foundation Vision 25 goal is whatever you can read on that screen. <laughs> <laughs> Who's the closest? Susan, can you tell me what our Vision 2025 goal is? That's our goal. And our goal is a vision. It's a vision to take our models to stay free at 126 and continue to improve our work there. Use those existing models uh, to maximize opportunities and create collaborations in other communities. We will begin with you helping us, helping us to identify um, the, the pathway by which we will do this work, secondly, walk alongside, guide us, and support us, and be a part, be a part of the celebration, a part of this implementation, 
and a part of the commitment because we cannot achieve that audacious vision without you. I want to thank you all for being with us today. I want to thank the team, the Women's Foundation staff. I know that they've been recognized, but they are pretty awesome. to Leslie, because she would not be in the room at this time. Um, Leslie Shaw has been with us for over 16 years, and she's taken her lessons learned and shared them with over 60 other women. That is a long-term uh, commitment, and I will tell you, as a staff person, she's on our team as a liaison. Like, what is a liaison? And quite frankly, Leslie is the third highest donor to the Women's Foundation from the staff. If she's got it, she's good. I want to take just another minute to say to Rosemary and Alicia, empower women, empower women. And that's what you did for me. You asked me to push my leadership forward. You challenged me and held me accountable for being a visionary leader and to hold others accountable. You challenged me to celebrate success. And you rewarded me with smiles of encouragement as well as words of counsel. And the board of directors, to each of you, Thank you. Thank you so very much. Not just for being a leader, but for being a sister. Empower women, empower women. If this meeting felt to you like a Women's Foundation love fest, you got it right. That's what it is. But we roll up our sleeves and we make it happen. Shantae Van is not here today, she's on sick leave, but I know that she is on Zoom and watching and criticizing me, you know, critiquing me, um, and saying, wrap it up. That's her job. So to my dear Shantae, we miss you, and um, we look forward to you coming back. To each of you, please be safe, be well, be good, do good, and stay with us and stand with us. We promise to be committed to this Memphis community. Each of you, please have a great day. And I will ask Nisha and Rosemary, Rosemary and Marcia to come back to the stage. responsibility as Prince Chair. <laughs> she is nothing if not persuasive. And um, her over 20 years has been an amazing, amazing example for all of us. Point of privilege today. From the time I was teeny tiny, I have watched my parents give and do for others. They're here today and I thank them for the work that they began in me. My husband, Craig, was late to our first date, y'all. 
because he was changing somebody's flat tire. He has inspired me to be a help to others. My son, my most under un, undeserved gift, straight from my God. I always tell him my favorite thing about him is his heart. My partner, Steve. When talking about serving on the Women's Foundation Board, and actually, Ruby had to have a conversation with him to get permission to be co-chair. Um, he always told me, if we can't do these things, Nisha, why are we here? My heart is so full to have each of them here so they can see firsthand how their example and their support have influenced and inspired me. Thank you. Well, my village is here. It's a small village, but it means a whole lot to me. Rick is here, <laughs> who has endured many, many nights with no dinner. <laughs> and he is, he is looking in that refrigerator trying to find something for dinner. And thank you very much for your support. The president and CEO today, John Phillips. And thank you for allowing me the time to do this service for our community and surely appreciate your support, John. My sister has joined virtually, Betty Churchwell, and she is in Dallas, Texas. Hi, Betty. Thank you very, very much for your, your support for all these years of all the different things that I have gotten myself into. And I surely appreciate your support, Betty. My Girl Scout friends are here, and they're my roots. I am a Girl Scout, always a Girl Scout, once a Girl Scout. And that was the root of coming to the Women's Foundation, and my connection to the Women's Foundation was Shante Amen. And she introduced me to this wonderful lady, Ruby Bright, and the rest is history. And we have Michelle, she is the director of the Tennessee Aeronautics Commission, my next chapter, um, for a five-year service as a commissioner. And thank you, Michelle, for making the flight uh, from Nashville. We surely appreciate your attendance here. Susan Stevenson, I can't tell you the influence you have been on me. I have reached out, needed help. And she was there. And that says a whole lot when a fellow board member and a business colleague will step up and help. Thank you very, very much for that. The board has been an unbelievable influence on me. And when I first stepped into the room, Alicia will attest to this, it was, oh my goodness, these ladies are the who's who of the Memphis and Shelby County community, and I don't deserve this position. But you know what? Dr. Bowden, I can't tell you, I mean, we don't know each other that well, but there has never been a time that I have been, there is always, every time I am in contact with Dr. Bowden, she has encouraged, stated words of wisdom each and every time. So it is truly our pleasure to be able to pass the baton to Dr. Bowden and Gina Brewer, and our baton is the gavel. <laughs> and we are going to pass the chairman, co-chairman baton and gavel to Dr. Bowden and Gina Brewer. Thank you very, very much. <laughs> this indeed is a great honor. When Ruby asked me, who do you think should be board chair? 
I'm thinking, I said, well, you know, I'm going to have to get the directory and look because I'm, I know everybody pretty well, but I'm terrible with names. She says, what about you? <laughs> Silence. <laughs> it never occurred to me. It is an honor to work with great women, and that is who our board is, and the most incredible staff that in any corporation, company, world, that's the foundation for um, our, our greatness. It is an honor. I will serve you well. And I'm going to be asking you for a lot of money. <laughs> <laughs> and with that, if there's nothing further, I would like to close on you. Thank you all for joining. And I know you're going to be visiting, so please mask up as you're uh, doing that.